um, the second R exam, practice three. Um, I'm going to talk about the solution for several questions. I might have enough time to talk all the problems. So I'm going to pick up some problems. I think it's important and uh, mostly confuse the students. So I, I will pick up some questions. And if you have other questions, you can stop me and I try my best to answer you. So uh, the first question um, is about the connection of resistor and a capacitor. And if you just take a, a quick read of this paper, you will find that we have four questions. Number one is the capacitor. Number two is a inductor. Number three is EM waves. Number four is the circuit at a steady state. So I think this will be the flow of the second R exam. And I suggest you to read the R exam before you write down your solution. And you will find out some of the questions is very easy, but some of the questions are very difficult. You can go to decide which one uh, is easy for you and you can jump in the question from the easiest one, then go to the hard one. And I find that to solve the first problem, number three will be the, the easiest question to solve. Then there'll be the number two, then go to number one. But I think if you just uh, start from the number one, you might not know how to solve this question. So, um, so my suggestion for you on Monday is to review, uh, to read all the description and read all the questions and you will find the order of these questions uh, is not followed by the difficulty. So why not start from the number three? So the number three is a question of the resistance. So we have uh, a resistor here and the capacitor connect in series and the outside the voltage is V. And what we know is the geometry of the capacitor. We know the radius and the separation, and we know the current as a function of time. So we know the maximum value and we know the time constant. So the first question is, um, what's the resistance? We have the formula that if the resistor and the capacitor connect in series, then the time constant is equivalent to the R times C, the resistance times the capacitance. The time constant is given 10 to the negative six seconds. And the resistance is our uh, objective and the C. C is a capacitance. And if you check your uh, equation sheet, you can find the two equations that have uh, the capacitance in the equation. The first one is the definition of the capacitance. That will be the charge on the capacitor over the, uh, the, volt, the voltage of the capacitor. The second one is the determinants of the capacitance. That will be the, the capacitance. We have the surface, the surface area of the plate divided by uh, the distance between two plates. And you will find that these two equations, there's no way to use the first equation because we don't know the charge and we don't know the voltage. But we know the geometry of the capacitor. We know the area because we know the, uh, the radius of the plate and we know the distance. So we're going to use a second equation to determine the capacitance. So we have the resistance equivalent to the time constant over the capacitance epsilon non and pi rc square divided by d. Okay, then I tell you the, the result. The result is and 719. Oh, this is number three. Then let me go to the number two. What's time dependent electrical potential difference? So we're going to calculate the potential difference between these two plates. We are going to calculate this one. And we only need to give a algebraic 
uh, time dependent equation. So no, no number, just an uh, expression. Um, okay, so to solve this problem, let's check the steps. So we have three steps to get a time dependent expression. The first step is to uh, determine that the curve grow up or drop down. It goes up or drop down. The number two determines the time constant. Number three will be determine the maximum value of the voltage. Okay. And from this circuit, we know this is a capacitor and a resistor. So when the switch close at the uh, early beginning, um, there will be a current to charge the capacitor. So there will be current through the capacitor and the voltage across the two plates is zero. And after the, the charge is done, then all the charge is on the capacitor and there's no current in the circuit. And everything goes to steady state and the voltage on the capacitor is the voltage of the battery. So we can determine the curve grow up. So this is the voltage. So if the curve grow up, then the expression will be V equal to the maximum value times one minus exponential decay. Okay. Then we have two parameters on no. One is the maximum value of the voltage. The second is the time constant. The time constant we know is here. They should share the same constant. That's the same constant for the current and also for the voltage and also for the electric field. And this is 10 to negative six seconds. And for the voltage, that's the maximum voltage. And we talk about this maximum voltage on Wednesday. According to Ohm's law, the maximum voltage is equivalent to maximum the current times the resistance. Okay, that will be uh, so that two amp times the resistance. Resistance here, seven volts. Oh, so this is the expression. Then let me go to the number one. Uh, when time is much larger than the time constant, what's the electric field between the conducting plates? Then the electric field at the time go to infinity. It's a steady state. Electric field could be re, uh, could be expressed as a voltage on the plate divided by the distance. So this is a, a equation you should know. And we have the voltage go to this one. And at the Time goes to infinity, the exponential will go to one. So when time goes to the infinity, the voltage goes to the maximum voltage. So the electric field, when time goes to infinity, it's equal to the voltage. Time goes to infinity by by D. Okay, so we have the maximum voltage, that's a two amp, times 719 ohms by by D. D is the distance between two plates of the two centimeters. All right, so eventually we have 7900 voltage per meter. Okay, any question? Okay, let me move on. Number four, right after the switch has been closed, at time equal to zero, what's the magnetic field of what's the magnitude of the magnetic field? Uh, at R equal to R C over two from the wire. Okay, from the wire. This is wire, and the distance is R C over two, and we are going to calculate the magnetic field. And let's check the equation sheet. We have magnetic field generated by a current 
multiplier that will be e equal to mu nung i over 2 pi r. Right? r is a distance from the testing point to the wire, and i is a current inside the wire. Okay? At time equal to zero, we have the expression for the i. Okay? So we have i is equivalent to the i nung exponential decay. And at time equal to zero, this guy equal to one. So we can erase it. So at time equal to zero, time equal to zero, this is equal to i now. So I have mu nung, that's four pi times 10 to the negative seven. I is two m over two pi r. R is rc over two, so that's pi rc. RC, what's the value of RC? RC is one meter. One meter. So the electric field, uh, the magnetic field will be um, that? It will be 1.6 times 10 to the negative six Tesla. That's number four. The number five, right after switch has been closed at the time equal to zero, was a magnetic field uh, observed a distance of R from the center of the plate. Okay, that's a plate. Just now we talk about the magnetic fields outside the wire. Now let's go to the plate. This is axis of the plate. And the distance is RC over two. And we know there are change electric field between and to calculate magnetic, uh, magnetic field, we're going to use Maxwell's equation. Maxwell's equation said if the electric field change, it will induce magnetic field. And we have a line integral of a closed circle for the magnetic field that will be equal to a constant times the change of the electric flux. And we can sketch a circle. A small circle with the radius of RC over two and inside a circle, the magnetic field and the electric field is a constant. So we can simplify this equation as magnetic field times two pi r, circumference, mu nung, epsilon nung, the change of the electric field, derivative of electric field times the area of the sketch circle, that's pi r squared. Here, r equal to rc over two. If the circle I sketched, Then we can solve the magnetic field is mu nung epsilon nung chain derivative of the electric field times r over two. Okay, then the next question is what's the value of the derivative of the electric field? We have the electric field at the beginning here. And the electric field actually could be um, derived from the potential over the distance. The potential is an exponential decay. Oh, it grows. There's an exponential growth. And the electric field should also follow the same curve. That would be the V nung over D. That's the maximum electric field times uh, exponential growth. Then let's do the derivative. That will be V nung over D, then top, when time is equal to zero. So that's easy. We can replace the derivative by the voltage divided by the D and the tau. That will be, this is equivalent to the mu nung, epsilon nung, the voltage, over 
the tau times d, the distance between the two plates times r over t. And we know the value of all the parameters. So eventually, the result will be 4 times 10 to negative 7. That's it. Okay, final question. And sketch a diagram of the magnetic field as a function of r. So from this equation of problem five, we have magnetic field as a function of r, as a b is proportional to the r, as a linear curve. And this linear curve is applied in the case when we have the radius smaller than the radius of the of the plate. So if we have the radius smaller than the RC, I could use this equation. And this is a linear increase. So I have the B as a function of R as a linear line. Okay, linear line. But after R is larger than RC, things are quite different. Because if we have a very big circle, this is a plate, two plates, and I sketch a very big circle. And the electric field are inside two plates, and there's no electric field, no electric field outside of the plate. Then the flux doesn't depend on the radius we sketch. It's a radius, no matter how big the circle is, the electric flux is a constant. So if the electric field is a constant, that means this term is a constant. This is independent of the R. Then if this is a constant, I have a B over two pi R, that will be a constant divided by two pi R, right? Then I will have a curve Magnetic field is proportional to the one of R. So the curve should be one over R. That's the solution. Do you have any question? Okay, if no, um, let me move to the next question. I just replaced the capacitor by an inductor. So in the inductor, what do we know? We know the inductance. We know the geometry. 0.5 meter long, number of turns, and the radius of the cross section. And we also know the magnetic field inside the solenoid the maximum magnetic field is 0 0.02 Tesla, and we have the time constant. So the first question, what's the time dependent magnetic field inside the solenoid? Time dependent expression follow the three steps. First one, does the curve grow up or drop down? Second one, determine the time constant. Third one, determine the maximum value. A magnetic field. Okay, so if we don't know that the magnetic field goes up or down, we can determine the current because in the solenoid, the magnetic field has a relation with the current. That's a mu non number of turn current over the length. Uh, length, let me use another parameter length. This is a length of the solenoid. Of the inductor. Okay, this is S. And if the current goes up, then the magnetic field goes up. If current goes down, this goes down. So let's check, determine the current. We know at the beginning, when we close the switch, the inductor will generate a very big opposite potential to um, decrease the current. So at the beginning, the opposed potential 
is uh, is the biggest. So at the beginning, there's no current in the circuit. And what else? The second one is when we go to steady state, and um, the time go to infinity, then the inductor go to steady state and the current doesn't change. If the current doesn't change, there's no potential difference. There's no EMF. It doesn't generate an opposed voltage. In that case, the current go to the maximum. So current is a steady state. So this is the curve of the current. So eventually, the inductor could be treated as a wire. Then there will be a battery connected with a resistor. But at the beginning, the current is zero. So if the current grow up, then we have a magnetic field goes up. And if it goes up, then we have the expression that will be magnetic field equivalent to the maximum of the magnetic field time one minus the exponential decay. This is the expression. Then number two, the step two is to determine the time constant. And we we'll already have the time constant, the maximum value we already have here. So that's the first question. Number two, what's the value of the resistance R? So when we have a resistor connected with inductor in series, Serious, then the time constant could be calculated by the re inductance over the resistance. The time constant is 10 to the negative 6, and the inductance we have is here 0.5 milli, 0.4 milli. So we can solve the R. That will be 10 to the negative 6 over 0.5 milli. Okay, we will have 400 ohm. Number three, right after the switch has been closed at time equal to zero, what's the magnetic field observed inside the solenoid? So we have B as a function of current. Is what we have just now because at t equal to zero current is zero so magnetic field is zero number four long time after switch has been closed what's the magnitude of the electric field so let's see to calculate the electric field we need to know the change of magnetic field because the change of magnetic field is going to generate electric field. The change of magnetic flux generates electric field. So in the solenoid, when time goes to infinity, the current is a constant. Everything doesn't change. Current is a constant, so magnetic field is constant. If a magnetic field doesn't change, there's no induced electric field. Okay, so the electric field is zero. Number five, right after switch has been closed at time equal to zero, what's the magnetic field? Uh, what's the magnitude of the electric field? Okay, so we are going to calculate the solenoid. Inside the solenoid, so this is axis, the RS here is RS, RS over two. We are going to use Maxwell's equation. 
Maxwell's equation said, if I have electric field, do a line integral and close the circle, that will be the minus time derivative of magnetic flux. The magnetic flux said, um, we can sketch a circle, small circle. Right. Then on the circle, electric field is uniform, and inside the circle, magnetic field is uniform. So this equation could be simplified as E times 2 pi r equal to minus derivative of B times pi r squared. And the electric field is equal to the minus derivative of the magnetic field times r over 2. The, the time derivative of the magnetic field is given at the beginning of the description. So that is equal to the maximum of B non over the time constant. So I have maximum of the magnetic field over the time constant. Time constant over the R. R is 0.5 centimeter over 2. So the result is 50 volt per meter. Joseph, uh, where did you calculate the ma the maximum magnetic field? It's given. Uh, here. Oh, okay, thank you. Why is the derivative of the magnetic field not negative on the last problem you did? Isn't it negative dB over dV? Yeah, you're right. Okay, okay thank you. And number six, and plot the magnitude of electric field as a function r, function r, Okay, so um, we just uh, calculate the electric field as a function r inside the solenoid. That's a linear curve. So this is so this is proportional to r. It's a linear growth. So this curve, and outside of solenoid. If I sketch a circle outside of soil, radius r larger than rs, then let's calculate the flux because we want to know um, this term. And the magnetic field inside the solenoid is a constant. And the magnetic field outside the solenoid is zero. So if I sketch a very large circle, the magnetic flux is a constant. It's only depend on the area of the solenoid times magnetic field inside. This, this is the flux. This doesn't change. This is not a function of R, not a function of R. So no matter how big the circle we draw, the flux is a constant. So if on the right side, this is a constant, then I divide by a 2 pi r on the right side. That equation will be equal to E equal to a constant over a r. Okay. So in this case, the electric field is a function of 1 over r. Okay, that's uh, problem two. And these two problems are very tricky. So I think if you think this is very difficult and confuse you a lot and costs a lot of time, you can skip this. But the number three, the question three will be very easy. So I hope you can get all the points on this question. So this is EM waves and the set at one moment the electric field points in the z direction. 
and the magnetic field points negative y direction is this x y so this is negative y magnetic field Close, 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 close. This so this is uh, electric field and magnetic field. We use another color. Magnetic field, electric field. So to determine the direction of the wave propagation, we use right hand row. So I curl my right finger um, from E to B. So my four fingers uh, is counterclockwise. Here, four fingers is counterclockwise, and my thumb goes out of the page. Thumb out of page. So in this case, um, the speed of the EM wave goes to the positive x. Okay, then you get one point in your pocket. The second one much very easy and the speed of the light will be c equal to three times 10 to the eight meter per second and you can find this value on the equation sheet and also you can use 2.99 blah blah blah, blah and 10 to the eight meter per second so any any number you want just write the number here then you get one point number three what's the peak magnitude of electric field this is also another easy tomato, and you have the electric field equals the magnetic field times the speed of light. The, the, the magnetic field is one Tesla, one Tesla times three ten to the eight meter per second. You have three times ten to the eight volt per meter. Number four, what's the magnitude of the point vector? So check your equation sheet. You have point vector equal to electric field times magnetic field over the mu naught. Electric field, you know, three times 10 to the eight. Magnetic field, you know, one Tesla. And the mu naught is also a constant of the four pi times 10 to the negative seven. Also a piece of cake So you have uh, 10 to the 387 times to the 14. And the unit, okay, the trick thing is the unit. Um, the unit of point vector, we can use the electric field uh, unit that's volt per meter or Newton per coulomb. We can use Newton per coulomb and times the magnetic field that's Tesla divided by the mu naught. Newton has also the unit to be found on the equation sheet as Newton, then ampere square. Then the Newton just gone. So we have Tesla ampere square over the current. Let's do this. And you can also simplify this one into another that will be the uh, the joule per meter or per meter square per second, but doesn't matter. You can use Tesla ampere square per foot. And number five, what's the peak energy density? Also an equation on the equation sheet. If you have the density, that will be equal to the B square over mu naught. Also, this is equal to the epsilon naught E square. No matter which equation you pick up, you should get the same result. Okay, so the result will be 7.9 times times 10 to the five. And the density of the energy will be the gel over meter cube. So that's the energy per volume. Uh, hold on. This is 
The number six, there is a uh, black rock absorb energy. Then what's the uh, momentum? This is another equation could be found on the equation sheet. The momentum is equivalent to the energy over the speed of light. So that would be the 10 to the 9 gel over 3 times 8 meter per second. So if I summarize this question, six questions, six equations. So this is a, a problem testing you how to find the correct equation. If you have a correct equation, then you will have a correct result. So you can finish this problem you know, very quickly if you are familiar with the equation. So the last one I think is very easy. So I want to skip this question. But I, as I said, if you don't know how to jump in this question, the first step is to simplify, simplify the circuit. The row is, I tell you the row. When you see an inductor at a steady state, treat the inductor as a wire. That's a cable. So if you see a capacitor, treat the capacitor as no connection. So that means we can erase the inductor by wire. And when you see the capacitor, remove it. So eventually, you will find this circuit could be simplified as two battery, 12 volt, 4 volt, Connect with a resistor. 50 ohm. And this resistor is short by this cable, by this wire. So no current to the resistor. So this is a current flow in this circle. So this is the circuit, simplified circuit. So after you have this one, it's very easy to solve the problem. So that's all. I think um, I stopped the reviewing and we have 10 minutes. Let's uh, do the quiz. And you can find the quiz on the equation sheet, the quiz night under my name, and you spend 10 minutes to finish the quiz and upload your solutions on the, on the course site. So that's, um, that's what I'm going to talk today.